everybody. Just gonna take a minute and uh, let everybody get a chance to sign on so we can art together today. So, you know, take a chance to go in the comments, say hello, let me know where you are watching from. Um, I hope we're gonna have some fun today making art because art is just wonderful. It takes you to a good spot and I just want everyone to uh, enjoy the process as we go. So we got, uh, Alabama, got some New York, Mumbai, ooh, that's cool. Um, I am broadcasting live from the slightly overcast state of New Jersey. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be 74 degrees this afternoon. It's gonna be a nice, nice day. I don't know what 74 degrees is in Celsius for all my metric friends. I don't know, I can like, ask Alexa. Alexa, what is 74 degrees in Celsius? No, she doesn't want to answer me. She's being shy right now. <laughs> Got some California, New York City, Israel. Wow, Argentina. Mm. San Francisco, Colorado, France. Wow. <laughs> This is awesome. I should do more lunchtime broadcasts. It's like lunch with Lauren. <laughs> Hello from Norway and Florida. Clinton, New Jersey. Woo! Jersey strong. Florida. Northern California. I've never been to Northern California. I always wanted to see the forests there. They're supposed to be beautiful. Oh, your Alexa just answered. That's hilarious. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> I should be like, Alexa, or hey Siri. Okay, Google. Siri, Apple's virtual assistant and phone control interface. Okay, now my Alexa decides to talk to me. 23 degrees, that is nice. Yeah, because I know 32 degrees Celsius is like a hot summer day, and that's like what I base all of my metric temperature from. Hello from Germany. Dominican Republic. Manchester. Canada. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> okay, well, let me introduce myself. Um, I am Lauren Arno um, on the Sketchy app. I am known as Icky Sticky Art Star on um, Instagram, I am known as Clutter Monster, so if you want to like follow me on social media. And you can also find me on the Sketchy Art School, just as Lauren Arno. Um, I teach a crash course in watercolor. Um, I am an art teacher for the public schools in New Jersey. Um, I teach special education art, which is awesome and fun. Um, so right now I'm doing like distance learning online, which is, which is pretty cool because uh, I've been pretty used to teaching online thanks to Sketchy, um, so it's it's a lot easier for me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's so awesome. So many people are tuning in right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy that I'm able to bring you some art on this Wednesday. Um, yeah. Oh, also, Sketchy is running a sale in Sketchy Art School. So we are doing buy one, get one for any of the watercolor courses. So they should be listed um, below in the description. So we got some classes um, that you can get a little discount on because I know, you know, right now people, a lot of people are stuck at home. So why not learn some art? So yeah, you can take my crash course. Um, Charlotte has a class. Uh, Lisa, Marguerite, um, Joan, I think Nadia has one. Um, so there's going to be a code, um, BOGO, B-O-G-O. -O. Um, it's going to expire in 24 hours. So get those two classes, buy one, get one. Um, yeah, so that is the reminder about the discount code. Um, that probably should be a link in the description for that as well. Um, yeah, let me introduce you to my muse today. You can see in the corner up that way, above my head. <laughs> really, really adorable um, young lady. And this was provided by the sketchy um, user North60. 
Um, so today I'm going to focus on doing a watercolor of this adorable little girl munching on an apple. Um, listen, if you don't have watercolors and you still want to play along, don't worry about it. You can use colored pencils, you can work with pencil, um, whatever you want just to create art. If you want to still get the painting effect, you can even just grab your kids' markers. Um, and it is totally fine just to use them. Grab like a paintbrush, hopefully you have something better than like a, a little Crayola paintbrush, but and you can just color and either keep your um, marker splotches on a separate piece of paper and use that as a palette, um, or you can just color a little bit on um, the paper itself, but sometimes it leaves a trace of the line and you can do your watercolor that way. Um, so, I mean, you have no excuse to not make any art today. Um, a doodle a day definitely is your homework because uh, it, it definitely keeps the sadness away. Um, it's just, it's wonderful for you. So like I said, I mean, if you want to use just regular old markers, you can. If you want to use colored pencils, whatever you have on hand to make art with us. Okay, so I already introduced you to my muse, which is um, this little cutie from North 60, um, from the Sketchy app. Um, and yeah, let's get started. I did a little bit of a pre-sketch. Um, usually I don't use dark pencils when I'm doing sketches for um, my watercolors because sometimes the pencil will, if it's like a, a really soft lead, it will bleed through. And I don't like that. Um, I like keeping my colors as pure as possible, but you won't really be able to see it on here. So I'm just going to take my magic pencil, colored pencil, and darken this up for you a little bit. Okay, um, so as always, if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I will try to answer as many as I can. Um, sometimes I get a little absorbed in what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't really help it. Um, so if I miss you, I'm sorry. You can always message me um, out at the Sketchy Art School on the Mighty Networks. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get this started. I, want, I do apologize. Sometimes when I'm making art, I... Um, I sing Disney songs, so I'm sorry. All right, so um, I just did a basic layout of her face. Um, I'm saying I'm um, way too much, but that's that's cool. All right, so just gonna darken up these lines. Usually, I'm I'm one of those people that I don't do the traditional circle, the Loomis method. I I really dislike creating a map of shapes. Um, sometimes I will, yeah, oh, this is a magic pencil. Um, if you can see here, um, the pencil lead is multicolored. So as I use it, it will shift and change colors. They're by a company, Colonor. I believe they're a German company. I don't know. So my European friends, you know, can tell me that. <laughs> um, and what I like about the magic pencil, as you can see, like I got some blue coming out here, a little bit of orange there. Um, it adds an extra element of chaos to when I'm drawing. Um, sometimes you can sort of predict what color is coming next, but other times you really can't. So, I mean, that's just how I do. <laughs> so yes, that is my magic pencil. Um, I also have bigger ones somewhere. Is I love them. Curtain. Elbow. Let's go. Yeah, I don't know what my big one. But you can uh, find these on Amazon. Some art stores carry them. Do, 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 do. See, I warned you I'd start singing. So I'm basing everything off of her nose. That's where I'm getting my proportions from. Um, so if I look out of its case. I've been looking for a magic pencil all my life. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> and I found them. Like literally that's what they're called, magic pencils. So if I look at her nose, I can use my pencil to like measure from here to here. And that's like almost the distance of her eyes. Um, and then from the nose, measure from there, that's like hits the center of the eye. So that's how I do my proportioning is I uh, take a feature and I will 
use that as my canon of um, measurement. And I mean, like some people like using rulers, other people like using a grid. I stink at using grids, but you know, what else? <laughs> Aw, thank you, Cindy. She said I'm um, her favorite art teacher and she loves my quirkiness. Yeah, I am, I am quite silly. It works for me. It's a uh, part of my teaching style. When my kids at work uh, are not paying attention well enough for my liking, um, I will start singing to them. And some of them love it, others hate it, but it's very effective because the ones that love it will start paying attention and sing along with me as we work. Um, my students who hate it will start whining and uh, they will just, you know, plead with me, Masarno, stop, 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 stop. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll do my work. I'll, I'll, I'll do my math homework. <laughs> just please stop singing The Lion King so loudly. And, you know, other times when I have, like, a grumpy bear, I'll start singing to them. And, uh, so let me see if her face is, like, that big. Oop, oop, I did not make her head round enough. I cut off the back of her head. I'm a monster. But you know, when you're drawing, if you're just like, if you're not like a portrait hire, portrait hire, that doesn't make sense. If you're, you're not a portrait artist for hire, like it doesn't really matter you know, if you lose some proportions, just as long as you're having fun and you learn something about yourself or your supplies or the process, you know, that's, that's what matters. Let me get this shape in here. And she has like a, Sometimes I even map out the shapes of the um, shadows. That's what I meant to say, yes. Um, just because it helps me proportion things. Oh boy, there's a big truck driving by my backyard. Um, just because, I mean, it, it helps me uh, like place where things are. So very lightly, I will do um, some shadows. Don't forget, if you haven't taken my watercolor class yet and you like my quirky style teaching, buy one, get one half off. Shameless plug. A little advertisement in there. So, I mean, you can really use any of the shapes that you see to um, map out your drawing. You can use the negative space shapes, like uh, in her hand here. So use them. I um, might exaggerate some of these shapes in between her little fingers. Because I think it's a little girl. It could be a little boy with long hair. I don't know these things anymore. My friend's son Wyatt, he has the most gorgeous long wavy hair like ever because the kid hates getting haircuts. Oh my gosh, beautiful child. So Molly, if you're watching this, I think your children are gorgeous. Do more classes please? Okay. I will do more classes. I'm actually um, considering doing a color theory class. I just have to sort of fine tune some things. Oop, made that a little bit too wide there. So let's get this. I'm doing pretty good 15 minutes in. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you ever have suggestions for your favorite instructors, what classes you would like them to do, like email, um, Jordan, email, sketchy, the make notes on um, comments to your instructors on the app and just be like, hey, I want you to teach a course on this. I really like your style, the way you do that. And a lot of times you don't even really need to ask us to teach a course. Like sometimes you can just ask us and we'll be like, okay, I'll tell you how to do it. Um, I mean, the other day, well, it wasn't a day, it was more like a month ago. Um, one of my watercolor students asked me um, specifically how to mix some certain uh, flesh tones and so I did like a quick little five minute um, video on my palette and how I mix those specific colors. I feel like I didn't make that wide enough. So as you can see, like, uh, brain fart. <laughs> um, as I'm mapping out the shapes here, you can start seeing the, the way that the magic pencil 
is shifting colors and it, it's, it's fun. I like it. I hope you like it too. If not, oh well. <laughs> My painting, not yours. That's mean. I'm sorry. But it's true. It, it's, you know, I'm the one getting enjoyment out of this. Um, so yeah, a lot of people seem to be interested in color theory. I know a few people would absolutely love um, Fran Stone to do some more videos um, on how she does ears and noses because, my gosh, who doesn't love to listen to her style of teaching? Um, so I, uh, I've taken another class with uh, Lisa on Procreate. She's a really great teacher too. I highly recommend. And she has a watercolor class. Um, so yeah, also if you ever have any questions about supplies or anything like that, whatever you want to know what your instructors are using, or even just like, not even your instructors, just fellow members on the app, I, I find that just asking questions, be like, hey, that's awesome. How did you do that? Most of the times, like within <clears throat> like 24 hours even, like they'll have an answer for you. Um, that's the nice thing about artists is we're so good at sharing. All right, let me get her part in here. Usually I don't work so flat. Um, I usually have stuff tilted up at an angle, but I wanna make sure I like, see things pretty well. Can I zoom in on the drawing so we can see the effect? Okay, um, I don't wanna mess with the camera, so I'll just hold it up. But you can see the effect of the pencil and how it's shifting colors there. Um, I have actually done an entire portrait. Oh, poop. My mom has it. Um, <laughs> sorry. I've done entire portraits with just using um, the magic pencil. Um, and it looks really, really cool because I'll do like a lot of cross hatching. So as soon as I find that portrait somewhere, um, I'll have to post it on uh, the Sketchy Art School um, so you can see it. If you already have the Sketchy app and you're um, one of those lucky people with an iPhone, then you can check on there my profile, Icky Sticky Art Star, and you can see um, if you scroll down before I got hardcore into watercolor, you can see some of my um, pencil drawings. You know what? That's wrong, but I don't care. It's okay. It's like supposed to be up a little bit more, but what else? You know, it's just the apple. I think the most important part of this would be her eyes and that mischievous little grin. I think I need to tilt this up, open the eye a little bit more. Switch pencils. What is a magic pencil? Um, again, magic pencil is a pencil from Colt Lenore. Um, and I can sort of see here. There we go. No, come on, zoom, zoom, focus, focus. There we go. As you can see, it um, has a bunch, well, not a bunch, just three different colors of colored pencil lead smooshed together in there. So as you draw, it adds a nice element of chaos. So I will, um, I guess, I don't know, I'll have a link to it somewhere. Um, So, yeah, sorry about that, like, mental pause there. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? I'm a, I'm a decent volume. Okay, let me highlight this question here. Um, will the colors of the magic pencil um, dissipate into the water and react with watercolor, like watercolor pencils? I find no. Um, this one, I do believe it is, um, like wax or oil based. I don't remember which, um, but it really doesn't dissipate like watercolor pencils do. So let's see here, um, uh, paintbrush, come here. It makes a little bit of like, um, like a slight dissipation. It, it's barely visible. As you can see here. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. But I find that the, the lines stay pretty strong. So it's a, a good pencil for that. Ooh. 
pardon me, I had coffee, so now I have the, the hiccups. <laughs> so yeah, that is that question there. So yeah, it is a, a pretty safe drawing pencil because it's not overly soft. It's more of a hard pencil. Um, I should totally pop one in the mail for France when she does her cross hatching because it's amazing for cross hatching because like it, it actually will start blending and mixing colors because as you can see here, um, I am not sponsored by Colinor in any way or magic pencils. I just really like them. So as you can see here, like you can, it almost starts to look black as you twist it and overlap the three colors and then cross hatching just, it's amazing. I love it. Okay. So back to watercolor. Uh, Cause I've already done enough. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy here. Let me just add a little bit of that now, a little bit of the shadow that's here. Just have a little bit there. And then underneath the eye. Got away from myself there. Um, erasing magic pencil doesn't really work if you use like a very, very fine line, um, very, very gentle line. Sometimes you can erase it. Um, <laughs> my mom just texted. She said I had that she has the cross-hatching portrait. I know, Mom, I know you have it. I'm a little sneaker, but whatever, I love you, Mom. Um, so, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, if you work with the, the magic pencil, you sort of have to treat it more like you're working with uh, ink, because uh, it does lay down and it, it really doesn't like to erase. But if you do draw as light as I did in some areas, you can pick it up a little bit. So as you see there, it does pick up a little bit. Oh, a word of advice. It's always good to use a kneaded eraser on watercolor paper just so you don't ruin the finish of it. Okay, let's get to the fun part. Aww, someone said they have a magic pencil, but it's like a watercolor pencil. So it smudges all over the place. Yeah, these ones, I got a box of like a dozen of these for like $14 on Amazon. And I have them all over the place, like literally. They're in every single one of my art boxes. Okay, let's play. I'm going to get a larger brush because I'm going to start with a larger wash. And whenever you paint a large area, you don't want to use a teeny tiny brush. You want to use a large brush. Um, so the first technique I'm going to be using is um, wet on wet. And I am just going to get a nice layer of water on the section I want to work, which will be the main area of the portrait. <clears throat> And I don't want to get it wet to the point where there are puddles. I just want it to be glossy. There you go. You can see that a little bit in the light. I missed the spot. So it's always good to have your, um, your painting on some sort of like clipboard or taped down to something like that or work straight from the block. Don't work from a pad because sometimes it starts to curl up. It's always good to have your paper taped down. Um, Last night I stretched my paper ahead of time. I just got it wet and then placed it down and used a, a little sponge. Okay, so that's nice and glossy. We don't have puddles. Okay, let me see. What color are we going to do today? The portrait has um, a lot of beautiful, warm, ew, um, sort of like autumn tones, which is kind of funny because we're going into spring. But whatever, I'm still going to use some autumn tones. Um, let me post this up. What kind of paper am I using? Um, I am using Arches watercolor paper. It is 100% cotton. Um, and I'm using their 140 pound, um, 300 grams per meter GSM. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Um, I'm a bit of a brat when it comes to watercolor supplies and I absolutely love using cotton paper um, and it just happens to be one of my absolute favorites. Thanks mom. <laughs> you got me addicted to the good stuff. Um, 
so yeah, I just, I like it because it can put up with a lot of abuse. Um, it, it just, it's a wonderful paper. Um, it's very well sized. I know it is a little bit on the pricey side. Um, so another really good brand is, where's my pitchfork? I don't want to fall off my chair. Oh, that would be kind of hilarious. Um, is the Canson XL brand. They have um, watercolor paper that is 140 gram. It's not cotton, but it's, um, it's what I buy for my students when they're just learning watercolor. Um, so yeah, that one, that one's pretty decent, very economical. Sometimes I can find it on sale for like $5 a pad versus like paying $40 a pad of paper. Uh, but I always use coupons. Um, okay, best places I buy water supplies from. Um, I go to Michael's a lot when they have coupons, um, for those of you who are in the States. And um, I'm using some purple right now. <clears throat> because uh, they'll have like those 40% off coupons every so often. And I love a good discount. Otherwise I will order from um, Blick online. Um, a little while ago in the summer, I did um, an art contest called Art Wars Philadelphia, which I won. And it was sponsored by Blick. Um, so I, I really like to support them because they enjoy supporting local artists. So, yeah, um, I'll, like sometimes I order things from Amazon. Sometimes I order things from Blick, um, AC more when they used to be around. Um, but yeah, those, those coupons, I agree with you, uh, Carla. They, they definitely rock. All right, so now I'm picking out some Azo Yellow. And I'm just putting that in the brighter areas. Oh, one person asked me what my favorite color was. Um, I have three. Um, I well, okay. If it's non-art, I have. Um, it usually goes between orange and green. I don't know why I like them. When I was little, I said I would never like them, but I do. Um, but my three favorite painting colors are Azo Yellow by M. Graham, um, Quinacridone Pink by Daniel Smith, Smith, not Smith, uh, and then Pathalo Blue by Daniel Smith, the green shade. Um, I find those ones rock because you can mix all three of them together to get like super luminous colors that pretty much span the entire rainbow. So, you know, it's cool. It's what I like to do. Okay, so um, I just added a little bit of quinacridone pink to as a yellow so I could get like this reddish color and right now I am just pull up and down color I need to prop this up because I can't see what I'm doing I'm gonna just dump out my art ah, there we go and I right now I'm just putting a gentle wash of where I see different colors. Um, I don't even really care what colors I'm picking up right now. I'm, this, um, the purple mixture is quinacridone pink plus the phthalo blue, phthalo. Um, yes, my classes, um, being that I am from Jersey, um, typically when I do live broadcasts, um, what's this one? Typically will be in Eastern time, so Sorry about if there's any discrepancy about that. Um, so although parts of me still, I feel like I belong out on the left coast. My, um, my one uncle lives out there in California. I have another uncle in um, Washington state. And I don't know, there's just something about that part of the country. I think it's like the color of the rocks. I just absolutely love it. Let me, pardon my arm. Okay, do I draw my sketch with graphite or watercolor pencil? How do I start? Typically, I will use um, like a 4H pencil when I start my sketches. Um, I'm only using colored pencil today so that you can better see my lines because sometimes it's very difficult for the camera to pick them up. 
So uh, typically I will do that right now. I'm just taking some mud. Um, I mean by mud, uh, I'm just like literally taking every color in my palette and like mixing it together to get like a murky brownish orange. And I'm using that in some of my shadows. It's always good to use a limited palette because uh, you'll have a little bit more color harmony. So you don't really need to buy a whole bunch of, um, of paints, like really, like I could probably get away with just the three colors, the Quinacridone pink, the Azo yellow, Pathala blue, Payne's gray, and a translucent brown, and I would be set. When did I start sketching? Um, that'd be a good question for my mom. Um, I think I started sketching and drawing in preschool. Not like seriously, like how I do it today, but um, my mom was a watercolor painter when I was little. Um, so like I've never had any formal watercolor lessons. So everything I do today is from remembering what she did when I was a little girl. Um, as well as just exploring and um, watching lots of videos, asking other painters questions. So, I don't know. I think maybe I may have absorbed something when I was in the womb. <laughs> Whoa, that's really way more pigmented than I want. But whatever, I'll just wet it and spooch it. I did a not fantastic job of stretching my paper because as you can see it's really lumpy bumpy. That makes me sad. Alright, so now I want to do a little bit of red on the end of the nose. I don't think I can get that nose big enough. Oh well. I'm gonna do a little bit more pink here, a little bit more pink here, and get it all purple. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, so let me post this question up. It says, um, so Betty says, um, so in doing art, painting, and stop it, um, drawing, sometimes you have to start over. Yes, I do. A lot of times I will start over. Um, it helps a lot if I, there's a piece of wet tape on here. It helps a lot if I do pre sketching. Um, and try to get to know a face beforehand and just draw it in my sketchbook. Um, like artists, you know, if you want to do a full painting, you should plan your composition. You should do some pre-sketches. Like a, a lot of time goes into a piece of artwork before you have like a finished masterpiece. I'm trying to look around my room to see if I have a finished piece. Um, I mean, as you practice more, um, sometimes like the, the pre-process, uh, the, the time gets a little bit less, um, but I mean, some artists will spend hours just choosing color harmonies that go well together. Um, I mean, we might not notice that it's hours going by, but because we enjoy it, because we're a silly group of people. Um, but yeah, so uh, like, don't be down on yourself if, if like you just can't come out of the gates and start off like with a uh, a crazy finished looking piece. I mean, if um, those of you who do have the Sketchy app, I mean, you can literally scroll through my journey um, and you can see, like, I, I have a lot of my boo-boos up. I post a lot of my works in process and you can ask my husband how many countless times, like, I was just in tears because something didn't go my way or I just didn't understand a technique properly. And you just, you got to go with it and you just can't give up. Um, I mean, you can put down your piece for a little bit. I don't know what color. I think I just grabbed, what are you? You're Holden, not Viridian, Vermilion? This is Vermilion. Um, it's like a nice warm red. So... Yeah, if you hear any little chiming noises, it's probably my mom texting me because she doesn't know how to use the chat feature yet. So, yeah, you just, you got to work with your mistakes, especially when it comes to watercolor. Because as I say in my class, watercolor is, um, 
it's it's more of something that you don't control. Um, it's more of a medium that you work with because um, there's so many factors that play into how your watercolor is going to behave. Like literally, it, it has behavior. Um, certain colors will react differently with the weather and humidity. Um, other colors, you know, they'll be staining colors or you'll have granulating colors. So one of the best things that you can do is play. Um, and just by getting to know your supplies, I'm taking some quinacridone pink and some yellow again to make a red color. Um, so yeah, so wait, what I got? I got a question here that says, do you find painting, drawing hair difficult? Oh my gosh, yes. I am not a master of hair. Sometimes I'll be like, splash some paint on there. It's hair. Um, <laughs> so how do I, like when I try to do hair, I try to treat it first as all one uniform, like piece of fabric or draping or shape. And then I'll pick out some of the shadows. Um, and then eventually I'll add a few details just to suggest that there's hair there and I'll let the brain take the rest of it. Um, hi Dina. <laughs> I, I don't know why you want to hear me say her name, but hi Dina. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. Oh my gosh. This is a really important comment here. Um, so advice for an art student losing drive and passion because of the workload. Um, Sometimes, especially like these times, it can be very difficult um, when you are emotionally stressed out, whether it be your workload or just the social climate um, or you're stuck at home. <laughs> um, sometimes it's good just to go back to the basics and revisit just pure technique and practice those. Um, that can and that can really help you. Um, it helps me a lot when I'm stuck. And other things that can help you, whether it be to actually purchase one of the classes or to make a public commitment to doing a challenge like 30 Faces 30 Days or the Inktober Challenge, which is one of the free challenges. Um, and to just force yourself to at least do the techniques, to at least do a doodle a day. And then Maybe even try out a new media, um, like if you've never worked with charcoal before, maybe give that a try. And you might spark a love in something again, or maybe just revisiting some of your old artworks and redrawing them. Um, maybe you can rekindle that, that first love and that little fire there. But I mean, arts, sometimes you don't feel like doing it, and that's okay. Sometimes you do have to put it down. Other times you just have to put on some good music and just push yourself back into it. Um, it can be scary. Um, so, I mean, just be gentle with yourself. And Leslie asks, is quinacridone pink kind of like permanent rose? Yes, it is. Um, Aaron says, I usually paint in oil. So you start your watercolor from dark to light. I thought this was the, no, I always start it from light to dark. Um, I always build, but unlike oil, um, rather than mixing darker colors in, I um, we just use less water, less concentrated to, to build up some of those darks. Okay, so one of the reasons why I'm talking a lot right now is um, I am letting my paper dry a bit because when watercolor paper is overly wet, stuff will start getting very soft edges and spurging out all over the place and spreading. So um, I want to start going into some more finer details. I want to start building up some value. So that's why I'm talking. I have a purpose for this madness. I am letting it dry. So why we let it dry? <laughs> that's really not going to work. Um, give you a little close up of what I'm doing here. I'm just picking out some of the shadow areas. Um, <clears throat> please don't be terrified to paint faces. Um, I mean, it's just paper. Like, seriously, don't be terrified. I mean, it can be very daunting because, you know, unlike a landscape, if you move like a bush two inches to the left, you know, it's still okay. You can't really move someone's nose two inches to the left, but whatever, just just do it. It's only paper. I mean, just sketch, have fun. I mean, even if you, if you have to go abstract. Um, do I ever blow dry my art? Yes, I do. <laughs> I actually have two blow dryers just for art. Um, 
when I was doing the artwork contest, I forgot to bring my blow dryer with me and I actually had my husband run across the street in the middle of the contest because you only have two hours um, to Walgreens and he bought me like a blow dryer on the spot. And I was just like, thanks, me. He's a very good supportive husband. So, yeah. All right. I might actually, because, oh my gosh, it's already, jeez. I'm going to grab the blow dryer. It's going to be a little obnoxious and noisy. I apologize. But I really want to get more going for you. All right, everybody turn down your speakers. As you can see, I'm still in my pajamas. Thank God I don't have uh, holes in these pants. That would be embarrassing. All right, so now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's start doing some of these details. All right, so I'm gonna start focusing on, on the eye here. All right, I want to keep like a beautiful luminous glow here, so I'm probably gonna do like a little bit of an orangey yellow. And see how the color is staying closer to where I put it? So now the only areas that I'm wetting are the areas where I want the watercolor to go. Because watercolor, even though it likes to misbehave a lot, um, you can guide it to only go where you wet it. So there's a little bit of like a pinky purple under her. There's a little bit of a... So when you do wet on wet, that's where you keep your soft edges. And then once you move on to the wet on dry, that is where you can have some of your hard edges. Um, and you can start getting more details into your shapes. So as you can see, this is like soft edge here. And then here is a hard edge. Now, because I'm painting a younger individual, sometimes I'll, after I lay down the hard edge, I'll find that I need to diffuse that edge a little bit. So I'll just take, um, while it's still damp, I'll just take a pure wet brush and just tickle the edge a little bit. It's really important to, um, excuse me, be very gentle with your brush strokes. Unlike those of you who are used to working with oils and acrylics, um, you do not like ever scrub pigment into your surface, um, you will destroy your paper. Please remember, it is paper. Um, yeah, and when you paint, you sort of just tickle it on there, and I try to keep my brush strokes in one direction rather than just like me. Um, and you don't want to overwork the paint in the area. You sort of just want to tickle it on. Um, I find when I'm teaching my students watercolor, I always have to remind them, just, you know, tickle, be super gentle. Um, for any of the individuals out here who work with um, makeup and cosmetics, you know how gentle you have to be when you're applying um, makeup to your skin because you don't want to tear up your skin or stab yourself with paintbrushes. That's painful. that shadow in and then I want to soften a bit. So how do you avoid cauliflower blooms of color? Um, one of the things you can do to avoid that is um, having an even amount of water to pigment ratio. So right now if I added like a lot of water into this area it will start to bloom so also if I were to add a new color in there and it was heavily uh, too much water um, ratio, then it would start to bloom. So one way to prevent that is to avoid having too much water on your brush, 
as well as to work in layers and let the layer underneath dry um, completely and let the paper absorb it before you work um, another color on top of it. Oh, I'm out of focus, like my face or more in focus or less in focus. Is that better? Maybe it's in focus. I don't know. I'm going to cut this shape in with a shadow. Sometimes you can use um, negative space as I'm doing here. I'm grabbing a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray. And I'm actually painting in these shadow areas. And see how it defined the shape of the auto? The addo? It's an addo. The apple. Um, <laughs> so silly. And you can use the negative space to define the positive space um, as long as the positive space is dry. So you don't exactly have to add more detail to the area that is the positive space or the actual subject, sometimes just by painting in the background area and those shadow shapes in those spaces you can actually help define what is there by defining what isn't there. I know that's really backwards but it works. So right now I got a little bit more um, my paint's gray, and I'm just applying the shadows here, which I didn't let dry. They're sort of bleeding a little bit in ways I don't want them to. And now I'm going to grab some translucent brown. And so suddenly, just by painting these areas of shadow, I'm letting the lights of the pale skin pop. <clears throat> um, so for anybody who's tuning in late, um, the replay will be available shortly after. Um, because sometimes it takes YouTube a little bit to, to process the video. So it should be available for you. You can rewind at any point um, and catch yourself up. Uh, also, remember in the beginning I said that um, Sketchy Art School is running the buy one, get one sale on um, any of the courses that have watercolor in them. So you can see some of the links in the description below for those classes. Remember, it is a 24 hour sale. So, you know, do what you got to do. So what kind of brush is this? This is, um, it's a long round Princeton velvet touch brush. It is, I believe this is 100% synthetic. Um, it's a nice one. I really like this company. Um, it has a really nice uh, snap to it and it holds its shape. Unfortunately, um, with synthetic brushes, eventually the bristles start curling. Supposedly you can, um, like stick them in some really hot water, just the bristles, not the ferrule, because otherwise you'll have the glue and then it will eventually um, supposedly go back to shape. Oh, thank you, Sketchy, for posting that there. The buy one, get one. BOGO is the code. I'm working on the shadows on the butt of the apple in order to, oh, I just totally ran over the finger, um, to define the fingers a little bit. As you see, I just did a boob right there. I did not want that right there. 
so I'm going to show you how to fix a mistake. I'm taking a stiffer um, brush, dampening it, then blotting it off, and I'm going to wiggle it over top where I made the boo, boo and then blot it, clean it, blot it, clean it, blot it, a lot of blotting. It's very important to blot your brushes so you know how much water you have on there. And then, boo-boo fixed. See, look. Aww, I just put too much water on there. Even us superstars make boo-boos. Because it's how we learn. Oh, okay, so the colors I'm using, um, I'm using um, Pathalo Blue um, by Daniel Smith, Quinacridone Pink by Daniel Smith, Azo Yellow by M. Graham, um, Windsor and Newton Payne's Gray, and I think this is Senilier. Um, translucent brown, I can't be sure, but it's a nice, like, sort of more neutrally brown. You can also use um, burnt umber. Oops. Um, I find that Daniel Smith is one of my favorite brands because their pigments are so bright and luminescent. Um, Windsor and Newton, I find that their pigments, uh, the their line of colors... Uh, it's more suited for um, like more traditional subject matter, um, like uh, landscapes and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I am coming up pretty close to the hour mark and I feel like I really haven't gotten enough done. I'm so sorry, I spent so much time chatting. Ugh, but whatever, we're having a good time. Um, Whatever I don't finish on camera, um, I will finish off camera, um, and then I will post it onto the art school. And then you can ask away with any questions. Maybe I'll snap like a few pictures as I go so you can still see the process. Boop. I really want to get like her nose to sort of glow. So I'm gonna take some of this azo yellow, slowly add some more of the pink to it to make it like a nice luminescent color. I'm looking at the bed on right there. This is the reflection. Does anybody else talk to their art while you're painting or drawing? Like anybody? Is it just me? I really hope it's not just me. It's really bad when I especially paint um, children or babies. Oh my gosh. I talk to them. I'm just like, oh, look at your cute little nose. Oh, it's so cute. Because I find I can never paint my own kids. It's just it's too difficult to get past that uh, whole barrier, that, that psychological, like, what I think they look like versus what they really look like. Thank you, Cindy. I'm not alone. <laughs> I really hope when um, Sketchy posts the replay of this, they leave the comments up because otherwise some of the noises I'm making just make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Erin. Yes, when you're usually mad at it. Okay, yes, I will start working on the eyes. Sometimes I do those first, and other times I like feel intimidated by them, and I, I save them for less. I guess today I'm feeling intimidated. But I will do that for you. Because I love you. That's awkward. Eyes, Lauren. Alright, so... Get some of the... Oops, wrong blue. Let's get some blue in here to define 
shadow because I already have some orange down and blue and orange. What are they? Blue and orange, they're opposite. So they're gonna neutralize each other and make a really nice shadow. Yes, I keep a color wheel handy. I'm just gonna plop that in to find some more of that. Let's get the same color before I lose it over here. Yeah, I am really happy that there is a replay because um, I'm one of those people when I watch these like paint with me and draw with me things like I just I can only doodle. I can't actually work on like the actual project. I have to have the replay so I can pause, start, rewind um, and all those things. So please, like if you can't keep up pace with um, the, the live stuff, like don't don't feel bad about yourself. I can't. I don't really like that shadow. It looks a little weird. Alright, so now we're going to mix up some pipil. Oh my gosh, dude. Let me get this on camera. Look how beautiful that is! That's the quinacridone plus the phthalo. Well, the quinacridone pink. You can also use like um, a permanent rose to do the same thing too. This is a permanent rose here. You can see it's like um, a little bit warmer. Um, the quinacridone pink is a little bit cooler. It's more like a magenta. But it makes the best purple ever. Because sometimes when you're mixing purples, like you'll have um, way too cool of a red. Um, and it's leaning more towards orange. And so when you mix it with the blue, you end up getting this really unique brown um, versus like a rich purple, which can be very, very frustrating for people um, and tricky. So that is why I should teach a watercolor class. All right, I've been painting way too long with the same water. Huge tip, if your paint water ever looks like this, get new paint water. Always paint with clean paint water. And don't paint with coffee or tea because that's not healthy. So usually when I'm painting, I'll always have like two or three water cups just prepared and ready to go because if you have muddy water, you're gonna have muddy colors. Um, all right, so now I'm going to get some of the Payne's Gray. And we're going to just gently dot that in there. I, wanna... I know I made her eyes like pink and they're not <laughs> so you can see <clears throat> I'm just using finer details now adding some more colors in um, this is a, a Princeton long round number four brush. Um, I like it because um, it's small and I can get the same point as like a number two. Um, but because the bristles are so long, it holds more water and more um, pigment. So that really helps me out. Now I'm talking to my paint. I just took some mud from my palette just so I can get the pupil a little bit darker. I almost called it the iris. I'm like, no, the iris is called the part of my anatomy. at the eyebrow there because ooh, excuse me this kiddo doesn't really have the darkest eyebrows ooh, excuse me this is what happens when I have caffeine I get the hiccups
Okay, I can't go any further without darkening the nostrils. Um, just because it's throwing me off not to have that darkness there to offset and balance the darkness in the eyes. I guess so. I don't know. That's my excuse for today. If you suddenly hear um, screaming in the background, that's just my children playing in the backyard. Because it is turning out to be a beautiful day. Oh my gosh. I'm so thankful that we're starting to get some nice weather. Because just rainy days, just cabin fever sets in for me and my kids. So yeah, how many out there are mommies and daddies? <laughs> can be really tough sometimes. You have like rainy day after rainy day with them. I'm really liking this shadow shape I have going on around the eye. Hopefully I don't mess it up. But if I do, I'm sure I'll forgive myself. So use your paper as the lightest light. Yes. Um, occasionally, if I do make some boo-boos, I will um, go back and uh, sometimes I can scratch into it. Or if I really plan ahead, I can use uh, masking fluid or some masking tape to keep some white, um, uh, white areas. I'm sorry. I just completely zoned out. Um, other times, I will just go back and cheat and use a little bit of white gel pen. I call it cheating because like I was raised um, to, to have like pure watercolor that the, the only whites would be from the paper. Um, I mean like occasionally you can use like a little bit of gouache but if you're like in one of those watercolor societies um, I know sometimes they don't accept that. We're gonna splatter all the way over there. You know I wish I thought ahead and used a little bit of salt on that apple that would be a really nice texture. <laughs> Teenagers are fun in quarantine, not ooh, yeah. Although I bet you their conversations um, make a little more sense than having conversations with five year olds. So um, right now I am using cold press water paper. Um, I do use hot pressed took a while for me to adjust to the different texture. Um, and then last summer, yeah, um, I started using um, aquaboard, which you're actually literally painting on clay, um, which is fun. I really, it's weird. Um, because with the clay board, like if you make a boo-boo, like it's, it's erasable. Um, like literally I can, erase any boo-boos like back down to the original like as long as you're gentle enough um the original clayboard um color which is just like what? oh yeah how do you guys like my buzz cut <laughs> i don't have blue hair anymore <laughs> i don't know what color you guys have seen me with last my son and i we decided to uh buzz our hair off together Is just trying to be a fun mom. Look at me going over time. Sometimes with hair, I just like letting random colors like there 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 is not supposed to be any purple here, but whatever. I really like purple paint. Quarantines. <laughs> um, is the pink the only red I used on the apple? Um, that's a really good question. So I want to show you how I mixed my color for the apple. Uh, let's clean off a spot. Okay, so here is my Quaternion pink. So as you see, that's very pink. It's very magenta. And here is my Azo yellow. Oop, a little bit too much yellow. But look, I'm making red out of pink. 
Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, um, and if you keep on adding some more of the quinacridone, it can get red. And then if you want to add a wee little bit of the blue to it, you can get like um, more of like a shadowy color there. So that is one way that you can create red if you don't have red. I mean, most of the time you're like, wait, red is a primary color. You're not supposed to be able to use anything else to make red. <gasps> I know, but you can. Um, yes, I do use salt on my watercolor as a technique for creating texture. Um, the only thing is, in order to do that, you can only use it when the paint is first laid down in that wet on wet stage. I mean, I could wet it down and add some salt to it now, but you would not get the same wonderful effect. It would only be able to manipulate the um, top layer of paint and it would not have that crazy, fantastic explosion effect that it usually has when you first start out. So that is why I can't do that. But I do love using the salt technique. It is a lot of fun. So let me take this off. I left them up there. Okay, so I know this is not an art question. Um, but all I have to say, Sienna, if you do do an undercut, um, they can be very annoying to grow out. I had the whole sides of my head shaved and, um, once it gets to like that stage where it's like too short to, um, like, like lay down, but like too long to, yeah, it just, it gets a little bit weird. So you got to like grow it out in stages and phases and it can be a little bit annoying, but I mean, if you want to do it, now's the time. Slightly off topic. Okay, back to the eyes, Lauren. I'm only seven minutes over time, right? You guys, you're still going, you're going over time? Okay, so there's this really awesome, whoop, um, little like highlight area here that I just love and I wanna make sure that I capture that because it's, it's such a cool effect. So I am actually letting some of the water do like that cauliflower effect to bloom there and push some of the paint away. Um, so I'm going to try not to lose that because it is just slightly lighter there. So I can add some darker around it and then tickle it and then add a little bit of darker under it. Oh, okay, so if you have questions about Aquaboard, Margaret, um, I just pronounced your name wrong, Marguerite, um, please email me or message me on um, Sketchy Art School because I have learned a lot just by experimenting and I have also destroyed a lot of Aquaboard. Um, I mean, I had a temper tantrum when like, literally I took like a chisel and just carved into it because I was so frustrated. Yeah, I have temper tantrums. All right, let me close the window because my kids are noisy. You'll probably still be able to hear them through the window. I'm just letting those eyes dry a little bit more. So that's why I'm playing with the hand. Or am I? Am I just in tune? Um, how much longer do you think I would need to finish this piece? Um, I could end up spending 15 more minutes. I can end up spending three more hours with it. Um, it really depends on the level of detail um, that I want to go. I want to try to keep this one like a little bit more loose. So I probably will end up spending like another half an hour with it before I consider myself done. Um, I always have to take breaks when I'm painting. Um, I'm not one of those people that can just like sit down and finish a whole piece. <gasps> mm, excuse me. Because, um, 
I'm not disciplined enough to know when to stop. I, I overwork things. Um, am I using old socks to blot my brush on? Uh, by accident, yes. Um, I do have some stuff here. Sometimes I keep old socks around and I put them on my hand and my arm so as I'm working on the paper I um, don't rub any of my skin oils on there because, you know, watercolor paper and watercolor oil and water, they don't mix. Um, also, I look like a rainbow from the 80s, Rainbow Bright. Um, and it prevents me from painting the side of my hand. So uh, for any of you who work with uh, charcoal or graphite, um, I always keep a drawer full of socks for my students um, and the clean ones. Um, and it prevents what we like to call the silver surfer syndrome when they're working with graphite and they forget to lift their hand or put a piece of tissue under there and their whole arm is just like silver. Um, so yeah, that is one of those reasons. Oops, I just accidentally put the wrong color in there. Whatever, it's okay. I just need brown. And I didn't mean to, but I'll work with it. Why am I whispering? No, I don't purple. I already have enough brown. Eyeballs. Let's get a little bit more detail in there. I'm sorry, you're gonna see like the top of my head. I'll like try to crouch back so I look really weird. Also, another nice thing about having the long socks, when I had hair, um, if my hair was ever falling, I would just take it and tie it around and use it as a, a headband. I've been known to do that. See, I lost the edge of her face. I don't want to keep like a hard, like crazy outline there. So I'm just using the negative space for hair. Although I did just cut it in a little bit too much there. So let's just take my boo-boo brush. This is my designated boo-boo brush. I don't even know what brand it is because I've used it so much it's just completely worn off. But it's always nice to have a boo-boo brush. It's sort of like a boo-boo bunny for artists. up this edge here and got a little yucky so I'm going to take some of my clean pink and clean up this negative space shape here and then I'm going to turn it upside down grab some mud and let gravity bleed into that shape Right, so um, I definitely am running over time. So for those of you who have to leave and uh, go take care of whatever it is you need to take care of, if your lunch break is over, or if you have young children who are going nuts and asking you to go outside, I understand. Um, just know that there is that sale um, with BOGO, um, buy one, get one. That's the code that you use on Sketchy Art School. You can uh, purchase my course if you haven't already or you can uh, get one of the watercolor classes from my fellow instructors who are amazing. Um, I might be a little bit biased towards them, but whatever, I like them. <laughs> um, so yeah, please, please make sure that you stay safe. 
um, make sure that you do a doodle a day because it just helps regulate and keep your emotions all good and gives you something wonderful to focus on. You can treat art as a type of um, meditation. Um, it is, you know, it's, it's really good for you. It's healthy. Um, I know that in some of the emails from Sketchy, like they posted some of the science behind it. What's his face? Bob Ross. I'm wearing my Bob Ross shirt. That my, my work wife bought me. She takes good care of me. The teacher I teach home with, we call each other work wives. So we always got each other's backs. So yeah, um, it feels really good. I am going to just finish this up off screen. Um, remember, if you have any questions or, or comments or um, need to know anything at all, feel free to message me, um, Sketchy Art School. Um, and I, I try to make myself available. If you forget, like if you just leave a general comment, I may not find it. You have to make sure that you mention me in your comment. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining in. Um, I enjoyed lunchtime on the Watercolor Wednesday. And uh, as soon as I finish this up, I will post it for everybody to enjoy. And hopefully for those of you who tuned in late or those of you who just need more time with your painting, feel free to watch the replay. But uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Um, much love. <laughs>